So, nakahanda niyo bang tanggapin itong Holy Spirit na ito? Baka pagkuhin niya yung buhay niyo. Praying in tongues is the key that unlocks the spirit realm. So, when you pray in tongues, you are operating in the spirit realm and you're not operating in the flesh. It gave them the infilling of the power. So, pumasok ang power, pumasok ang anointing, pumasok ang Holy Spirit sa loob. Walang tissue, walang cell, walang muscle, walang bone na hindi tinamaan dyan sa power ng Holy Spirit na yan sa loob ng katawan. And that is why healing takes place. Just give Him time. Healing will take place 100%. We would like to thank the friends and partners of Terry Chang Ministries. Hi, good evening po sa inyong lahat. This is Pastor Terry Chang and I would like to welcome you to our program, Living the Blessing by Terry Chang Ministries. Our topic for today is entitled, Jesus Has Given You, You, Life and Healing. And this is a series of messages. And uh, we're on part 8 today with the subtitle of the 25 Benefits of Praying in Tongues. Yeah, 25 Benefits of Praying in Tongues. So, uh, I would like to read these benefits first and then I will uh, explain to you each one. Uh, so, praying in tongues, these are the benefits. Number one, it is the gateway into the supernatural. I don't even say it is, it is, it opens the supernatural, it opens the invisible realm. Okay, uh, and number two, it is your hotline or emergency line to God. And all of a sudden, you can now talk to God, I mean alone, by yourself, and God is going to listen to you, all ears sayo. Number three, it is a most powerful prayer. Why? Because it's a perfect prayer. And it goes hand in hand with number four, the Holy Spirit prays on your behalf. Just to give you a little idea, the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father, and He knows your need, your desires. He knows what you need, and so it becomes a perfect prayer because He knows everything about you. Alam niya kung paano magkaroon ng solusyon ng yung problema. Amen. Number five, it is the most powerful weapon against the enemy. Wala nang uh, hold sa you, Satanas, when you pray in tongues. Amen. And it helps you overcome fear. Fear is the opposite of faith, so we have to overcome that. Because, you know, without faith, we cannot please God. If we're operating in fear, God cannot operate in our lives. The Holy Spirit cannot operate in our lives. It edifies you. It builds you up. Number seven, number eight. It gives you rest and refreshing. Pinaganala natin ng rest for you know, a few uh, Zoom live programs natin. And uh, ito, uh, makikita natin kung paano talaga ang mag-rest in the Lord. And number nine, it gives you divine health and healing. Marami pong sumusulat sa amin na may sakit, may mga karamdaman, may mga cancer, cardiovascular sicknesses and disease all over the world. At kailangan po natin pigilan o paano tayo magkaroon ng healing. And it's just so simple. Naku, pinapahirap lang natin ang ating uh, buhay. But actually, it is very simple. Because our God is very simple. Number 10. It is most effective when you do not know how to pray. So a lot of us, especially the new ones, or yung mga, uh, ano, yung mga, uh, Parang uh, tamad mag-pray dahil hindi na, nila alam kung anong sasabihin nila. This is the most efficient way to pray. Uh, because, uh, sabi ko nga, diretso kayo kay God when you pray in tongues. Number 11, you receive mysteries from God. Ano ba yung mysteries? Ibig sabihin to is passcode, itong secret codes. Merong mga sikreto si God and He is willing to share them with you. Amen. Uh, number 12, it gives you discernment. All of a sudden, may makikita kang tao, alam mo kung itong tao ito masama, may ma hindi naman masama, but meron siyang mga evil spirits behind him or harassing him or oppressing him or ma malalaman mo kung ang intentions niya sa iyo ay tama or mali. For example, gusto niyang mag-business with you, alam mo, alam mo, that they discern mo na kaagad yung mga spirits. Amen. Number 13, it empowers you to do the impossible. Yes, this is very true because the Bible says there is nothing that is impossible to him who believes. So, wala imposible. Number 14, it strengthens you. It strengthens you in the physically. 
spiritually, psychologically, in all areas of your life, you will be strengthened when you pray in tongues. Number 15, it makes you bold. All of a sudden, you become a bold witness for the gospel. All of a sudden, hindi ka nahihiya, hindi ka natatakot, lalaban ka like us. Kami ni Neil, lumalaban kami. Hindi kami natatakot. We are so feeling bold because we pray in tongues. We believe that the Holy Spirit is behind us. Amen. Verse uh, number 16, it opens the prophetic. You know, prophetic means in the future. All of a sudden, papakita sa'yo ni Lord ang future. Amen. Papakita niya sa'yo, oh, ito yung future mo. Like, for example, ako yung Terry Chai Ministries, I saw this in a vision 25 years ago, right after I attended a conference on the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the Iron at the Coliseum. Paglabas ko lang dyan, and then I went back to my house, and then I uh, knelt down before the Lord, and I started praying in tongues. Kasi gusto kong ma-exercise talaga yung praying in tongues. Dahil yun ang tinuro nila for three days at the Iron at the Coliseum. So talagang praying, 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 praying in tongues ako. And all of a sudden, may nakita akong vision na kalagay, Terry Chang Ministries, 25 years ago. At alam nyo, kailan lang nag-materialize yan? Four years ago. Then, siyempre, it's a huge responsibility. Napakaraming considerations bago namin magagawa ito. But now we're here. Naku, and we are so very happy because we're feeling fulfilled. We are fulfilling uh, the Great Commission, which is really the most important Kasi yan ang great commission, ang iniwan ni Jesus before he ascended into heaven. Amen. And 17, it gives thanks to God. It's worshiping God. It magnifies God. Gustong gusto niya ito. Hindi mo man lang alam kung anong sinasabi mo. And yet, it's giving thanksgiving to God. It's worshiping Him. It's magnifying Him. Ang saya-saya niya because you do that. And 20, number 20, it reveals the mind of the Holy Spirit. Naku, pag alam natin ang mind ng Holy Spirit, what could go wrong? Di ba? It makes you yield to the Holy Spirit. All of a sudden, it becomes not so hard to obey the will of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it's so hard to think about like the Tata Yuin Terry Chang Ministries and all that. But it makes you yield. It makes you yield because you're going to help him. He's going to do everything so that you're going to help him. And number 22, it gives you revelations. Number 23, it gives you wisdom. Kailangan, kailangan natin ang wisdom. And then, it builds your faith. Uh, without faith, we cannot please God. Important yan. Uh, it brings you prosperity. Yan ang paborito ng mga Filipino prosperity. Not only financially, but in all areas of your life. Amen. Okay. So, meron po tayong important points to remember. And uh, at the same time, meron tayong, meron akong babanggitin ang mga benefits as we go along. Okay. So, the first important point to remember here is praying in tongues will transform your life. Transform your life. Uh, yung uh, katulad po ng ginawa sa hindi na ako lalayo sa aking uh, lagi kung sinishare na testimony, but I'm going to be very, very brief. Nasabi ko sa inyo kanina when I attended this uh, conference, uh, Praying in Tongues at the Araneta Coliseum. Pagkatapos yan, di ba, nag-pray ako ng praying tongues. Pray, 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 pray. Araw, araw, pray in tongues, pray in tongues. Like a child, naniniwala ako sa mga sinabi ng mga pastors for three days, naniniwala ako. And I was even kneeling down as I prayed in tongues. And all of a sudden, di ko man lang alam na effect pala ng praying in tongues, itong mga na-experience ko, na He taught me, the Holy Spirit taught me how to read the Bible. And just read the Bible na parang uh, history, no? He was giving me rhema word, revelation. He kini kila putan ako. Si rhema word, my gosh, para ako na sa Bible school na talagang tinuturo na ako ng Holy Spirit. He was trying to explain things to me. So it, you know, the Bible became so it's the most an attractive book to me because the Holy Spirit was guiding me all along. Tapos he taught me how to praise and worship God. Ay na po, not just like singing to the top of my voice, but no. Praising and worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Naku, just ko, lahat ng miracles, my experience, mo, when you do that, when you praise God, when you worship Him in spirit and in truth, na tinuro niya ako mag-pray. And of course, ang aking priority noon is praying in tongues because I didn't even know how to pray. So, ginagaya ko pa yung mga prayer dun sa Old Testament, yung mga prayer in King Solomon or whatever. 
Kasi hindi ako marunong mag-pray. I was just a few days born again Christian. And then, alam niyo naman po yung nangyari. After a month, I got healed of cancer. I was literally dying. I was in so much pain. Pero pinagaling ako ni Lord. Walang chemotherapy, walang kahit anong uh, radiation treatment, walang, walang medication, walang surgery. And then after two and a half months, uh, we were able to pay up all our debts. At alam niyo po yung mga utang namin, million, million. God provided for the yung mga provision na yan. And then, kaming mag we were separated for one and a half years. We reconciled and Robert became the best husband to me. I became the best wife to Robert. For the last 25 years, yan ang kanyang ka-drastic ang ginawa ng praying in tongues. Connecting to the power of the Holy Spirit. Kakailangan, you don't take this lesson very lightly, this message very lightly, because it's going to help you. Ano man ang daladala mong problema ngayon, wala yan. Because we're talking of the power of the Holy Spirit that created the entire world. It, it healed, alam niyo, alam niyo po yung ministry ni Jesus for three and a half years, pinagaling niya lahat ng mga may sakit doon. Binigyan niya ng provision lahat na nangangailangan. Lahat ng miracles pinakita ni Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we are under the new covenant na kung saan ang power of the Holy Spirit can work in our lives. Makikita natin even sa life ni Neil, sa life ko, nakikita namin ang mga, dito sa TCM, may thousands and thousands of people all over the world are tuning in. Di po ba? Talagang maraming milagro. Ang Holy Spirit talaga, you don't take Him very lightly. You don't underestimate Him because He is God. Amen. He is God. And He loves you. He wants to transform you. He wants to change your life. Amen. Okay. So, yun ang sinasabi kong, the Holy Spirit gave me wisdom, which is my number one uh, benefit. When you pray in tongues, you will receive wisdom. Kailangan mo ng wisdom. In 1 Corinthians 2, 7, it says, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. It hindi get tayo ng wisdom ni God. It's a mystery kasi hindi mo man alam na yun palang ginagawa niyang o pagtu, pagturo sa akin ng Bible, pagturo ng praise and worship, yun pala, ang gagawin pala niya, paggagalingin ako sa cancer, which is like impossible, di ba? At ako'y payayamanin, at i-reconcile kami mag-asawa, no, wala naman kami pag-asa mag-reconcile because we hated each other so much. Yun pala ang gagawin ng Holy Spirit. Anyway, mystery, ibig sabihin ng mystery, it's a secret. Secret code. Okay, so sunod po natin. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. When you pray in tongues, you speak directly to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. So, ma-uncover nyo, ano itong mga mysteries na yan sa buhay nyo at magugulat na lang kayo. Amen. In all areas of your life, walang area sa life mo na hindi niya babaguhin. Amen. And benefit number two, when you pray in tongues, you are speaking mysteries. Ito na, yung mysteries na yan. The word mystery means secret. It comes from the Greek word mysterion, which means hidden things, divine secrets, secret will, secret plans, secret counsels, knowledge, and images and forms. Knowledge is withheld from the ungodly. So in other words, kailangan kang born again. Kailangan tanggapin mo si Jesus as your Lord and Savior before kang makaka-experience ng baptism in the Holy Spirit at before kang makaka-experience ng mga mysteries. You, kasi yung ungodly, it will be hidden from them. Itong Word of God is hidden from the ungodly. But truth is revealed to the righteous. Truth and truth will set you free and it will be revealed to you because you are the righteous one. Righteous and ibig sabihin and righteous, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. At sabi sa 2 Corinthians uh, 5.21, ang sabi niya, He made him who you know sin to be sin for us, that you may be the righteousness of God in him. In other words, because you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you receive his righteousness. Jesus is already on the inside of you. His righteousness is intact. Nandito sa yan. So when Jesus, or when God looks at you, 
He sees the righteousness of Jesus in you. This you, you are righteous. So it go I mere uh, privilege now all of a sudden by just receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Mysteries are invitations into greater depths of God's heart. Dito mo my experience. Dito mo my because the Holy Spirit will lead you there. Depths of God's heart in greater realms of revelation. We get access to these when we pray in tongues. Iba, iba ito, iba ito. Hindi yan biro. You will experience the divine presence of the Holy Spirit. You will experience His anointing. You will experience His power. And all of a sudden, nothing is impossible anymore. Amen. So this means that when you pray in tongues, you're praying out the future that God had already prepared for you. Future. Ito yung calling mo. Ito yung, yung uh, destiny. When you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is preparing you for this destiny. So, kawawa yung mga hindi nagpe-pray in tongues. Yung mga nagsasabing occultic daw yan, or demonic daw yan, kawawa sila. And that is why we have to continue preaching the gospel to them para sila ay hindi mabulag na ganyan. Amen. Now, we go to another important point, which is number two. The benefits are only for those who believe. Amen. Para sa mga naniniwala lang. If you don't believe, you're not going to get it. So marami pong inimbita si Neil na hindi naniwala. Kung hindi kayo, hindi nyo bibigyan ng pagkakataon kami magpaliwana kasi nandiyan sila ngayon. Then hindi kayo naniniwala. Then you don't get the benefits. Then this message is not for you. But if you want to prove it, wala namang mawawala sa inyo. Because itong praying in tongues ay laway lang. I mean, it's not going to cost you anything except itong effort na ikaw ay magpe-pray in tongues. And look, subukan mo one month, two months, three months. Tingnan mo kung ano mangyayari because God is not joking. Bibigay niya sa, uh, sa ating lahat ng mga scriptures na yan. Pagkatapos wala namang mangyayari. No, impossible yan. And besides, we have seen thousands of people who have prayed in tongues. Tongues up, who have prayed in tongues and their lives were completely transformed. Ibang klase yung buhay na nila ngayon. Amen. So it's only for those who believe. Question. Pastor Oliteri, mayroong question tayo from our audience. Pastor Oliteri, after I heard your preaching on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I began to speak in tongues. But I heard some people say that praying in tongues is of the devil. Can you please enlighten me? <laughs> okay. Mark 16. I think you'll answer, Jen. Mark 16, verse 16. And he, and this is talking Jesus, it's Jesus who's speaking here. And Jesus said to them, itong them na to were the disciples. And this was just before he was ascending to heaven. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. So sinabi niya, kanino ipipreach ang gospel? To every creature. Tama? Kasama ka ba doon? Kasama ba tayo dyan? Kasama ba? Kasama tayo dyan lahat kasi every creature. Go into all the world. Kasama yung buong mundo dito. Kasama lahat. O sabi nila, para sa mga disciples lang yan. Disciples lang? Sila lang masasave? No. The disciples turned the world upside down when they preached the gospel. Ang dami-daming nasave. Pagkatapos yung mga naging disciples nila, nagkaroon ang mga disciples, nagkaroon ang mga disciples, hanggang ngayon, tayo ngayon ang mga disciples. Present disciples. Present day disciples. It will never end. Hanggat hindi magra-rapture, hindi titikal si Jesus sa kaka uh, encourage sa atin to preach the gospel to all the world and to every creature. Mark 16 verse 17. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. Okay. He who believes. Dalawang conditions. He who believes. Kailangan maniwala ka. Maniwala ka. And is baptized. And this baptism here is not talking about baptism of water. It's talking of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to show you later why. Because he who believes and is baptized will be saved. And the word saved here comes from the Greek word sozo. Lagi ko pong binabagi dito. And it comprises everything that you need. From divine health and healing, financial prosperity, protection, restoration of broken marriages, like uh, ministry of angels, supernatural power, the living God, eternal life, 
fullness of joy, peace, and lahat, lahat ng kailangan mo yun. It is incorporated in the word salvation or saved or sozo. So, pag ikaw naniwala at na baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will have this salvation. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Ano ba yung condemned? Will be punished. Kasi hindi ka naniniwala. So, merong mga unbelieving Christians na nagpo-profess sila na sila ay believers and yet they don't believe. Kahit makita nila yung word of God, hindi sila naniniwala. I don't know what's gonna happen to them. Kasi ang alam ko, pag ikaw ay talagang tunay na Christian at pumasok ang Holy Spirit sa iyo, pumasok ang si Jesus sa iyo, hindi maaaring walang pagbabago. Amen. So, anong connection ang sinasabi ko sa question ng girl? Okay, verse 18. Ito ang sinasabi. Ito yung kasagutan dun sa question ng ating audience. And these signs will follow those who believe. Pag naniwala kami signs, in my name, they will cast out demons and they will speak with new tongues. So, ang question ko, kailan ka ba na born again? Are you praying in tongues today? Because nakalagay dito very clearly, and these signs will follow those who believe. So, naniniwala ka kay Jesus? Naniniwala ka he died and then he was raised back to life to give you salvation and you are not speaking in tongues? I don't understand that. Makikita po natin, pagkatapos kong malay down lahat itong benefits na ito, na napakalaking panghihinayang people na pinabayaan nila yung mga araw na hindi sila nagpipray in tongues. Important point to remember, number three. If you do not act now, you will stay exactly where you are for the rest of your life. Walang pagbabago. Kung ikaw ay merong problema sa pera at nag-start yan 10 years ago, and last year may problema ka pa rin sa pera, at may problema ka pa rin today, magkakaproblema ka pa rin for the rest of your life because you are not acting on what the Lord is asking you to do. Praying in tongues is going to help you. You can start by praying in tongues and then preach the gospel. Kasi kailangan i-preach. Well, sasabihin mo, pastora, how can I preach the gospel? I'm not a pastor. I don't know what to say. Well, you can't connect those people. Your relatives to us. Padala niyo yung link sa kanila, whether they watch it or not, it's okay kung hindi nila panood. Let the Holy Spirit work on them. Ang importante, we are helping in the propagation of the gospel. Napaka-importante po nito. I don't know how to explain to you, like in say YouTube, kung magko-comment kayo, uh, mag-like kayo, mag uh, mag uh, uh, so subscribe and mag comment or yung press the notification bell kung mag magkakaroon kayo ng rewards mamaya makikita niyo dito sa sa mga scriptures magkakaroon kayo ng mga rewards on this earth while you're here and in your eternal life but kung wala kayong ginagawa ngayon anong investment ang ginagawa niyo sa kaharian ng Diyos wala napakadali like I mean, you can do all these sorts of things. You can spend eight hours dito sa opisina mo. You can spend like four hours watching itong mga soap opera dito sa TV. And yet, you cannot press that like button para matap yung algorithm ng, uh, ng YouTube para lumaganap ang gospel. Sabi mo, hindi ka makapag-preach. Well, you link them up to us or padala nyo ng link sila para talagang uh, meron kayong ginagawa para sa gospel. Amen. Magsisisi kayo. I tell you that. Pagdating nyo sa heaven, when you face the judgment seat of Christ, magsisisi kayo na, bakit hindi ko ginawa yung sayang? Amen. Matthew 19, 29. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Hindi ibig sabihin ng who has left houses or brothers or sisters, ibig sabihin ito, abandon mo yung family mo, abandon mo yung bahay mo, abandon mo. No! Ang ibig sabihin ito in the Greek, ang ibig sabihin, you set time for God. You set time to serve God. Hindi puro yung personal na bagay mo. Gusto mong manood ng mga like messages ng mga preachers, kasama niyong akin. Pero for your own sake lang, gusto mo lang ikaw ay mag-prosper, gusto mo lang ikaw matuto, gusto mo lang ikaw ay maging iba na dahil gusto mo ma-fulfill yung calling mo as a pastor or as a preacher, whatever. Without thinking na kailangan pala ng family mo, kailangan ng mga ibang tao. Kung iniisip mo sarili 
Annie Moulin, I know you, you are not fulfilling the second greatest commandment, which is loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Hindi yan ganyan ang gusto ni Jesus sa atin. Gusto niya magmahalan tayo lahat. Gusto niya yung heartbeat ni Jesus. Kamukha ng heartbeat natin. Kung siya may heartbeat para dito sa mag-perish in hell, ganyan din tayo. Amen. And that was from Matthew 19.29. Now, Mark 10.29.30, ito yung sinasabi ko, na ang blessings nandito on this earth. So Jesus answered and said, Surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time. This is a revelation. This is a mystery. In fact, a lot of people do not even know this. Na pag ikaw ay tumulong sa pagpapropagate ng gospel, you will receive a hundredfold now in this time, nandito ka sa earth, and in the age to come, eternal life. Amen? Important point to remember, number four. As you pray in times, the Holy Spirit will deal with your problems from the roots. Okay, kailangan ko po ng board dito, ng whiteboard, because I need to illustrate something to you, okay? Now, ang sabi ko, as you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit will deal with your problems from the roots. Holy Spirit, ang sana ng Holy Spirit, hindi yung may sakit ka, okay, pagagalingin ka niya, uh, supernaturally. Pagkatapos after one year, may sakit ka na naman. Or marami po kaming mga tao na lumapit sa amin, pinag-pray, gumaling, pagkatapos after one year, after two years, or after three years, bigla na lang bumalik ang sakit, at namatay. Ayaw natin mangyari yan because we want to know how the Holy Spirit deals with our problems. Pa paano niya eliminate itong mga sakit na ito sa ating buhay? So number one is kung tayo ay may ito yung problema natin. Sickness. Okay. Let's say yan ang problema mo. It could be another problem. It could be like financial, prosper, uh, financial problem. It could be like uh, meron kang relationship problem, or whatever, ministry problem. But itong example ko is sickness. Ngayon, ang Holy Spirit gusto ka niyang pagalingin. But hindi niya lang aalisin ang sickness sa sarili mo, sa katawan mo. So, ang gagawin niya, makikita mo ang roots dito. First, sino ang nag-cause ng sickness na yan? Okay. Alam natin na tayo ay may kalaban. Okay? Meron tayong kalaban. Ito si Satan at saka yung kanyang mga napakaraming demonyo. Diba? So, alam natin ito na siya ang nagkukos ng mga sakit. Like a good example is what happened to Job. Alam natin ano ginawa kay Job, diba? Pinatay niya lahat ang mga anak niya. Tapos, nawala lahat ang mga ari-arian niya. Tapos, sinagyan pa niya ng sakit si Job. Nagyan niya ng mga boys ito sa kanyang katawan. So, alam natin in John 10.10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So, kailangan harapin natin itong enemy na ito. Now, nung uh, itong uh, susunod dito, ang enemy meron tinatawag na tactic of deception, which he has been employing for the last six years, as uh, 6,000 years. Nag-umpisa ito kay Adam and Eve. Di ba? When he said to, uh, to Eve na, you will be like God, knowing good and evil, and then biglang nagbago Ang pananaw ni Eve, all of a sudden, she wanted to be like God, knowing good and evil. Anong nangyari? Nawala lahat sa kanya. He, he, she lost her God-given authority over the entire earth. She was kicked out of the garden, and she lost her relationship with God. Kasama yung kanyang asawa. Diba? Yan ang nangyayari kapag, kapag tayo ay nagkasala. Yan. Nagkasala si, si Eve... Good example yan, si Eve. So, ito pong ating, uh, sa Proverbs 62.2, ang sabi niya dito, a curse shall not come upon anyone without a cause. May sickness ka, may cause. Bakit? Meron kang sakit. It could be sin, and usually it's sin. It may not be a sin that you committed yourself. It could be a sin because of the fall of man. Dahil we live in a fallen world, na-inherit natin ang lahat ng mga kasalanan ni Adam and Eve, it could be that. But, nakikita ko po sa ministry namin for the last, uh, like, 25 years na ako nagpipreach ng gospel, 
Itong kasalanan na to, talagang nagdudulot ng kamatayan, hindi lang sickness. Because the Bible declares it. Sabi niya, the wages of sin is death. Amen. So, itong sin na to, ay magkukos ito ng fear. Tingnan po anong nangyari kay Adam and Eve. Di ba? Nung nagkasala sila, anong sinabi? Anong sinabi niya? So he said, sabi ni God sa kanya, di ba? Adam, where are you? Anong sagot ni, ni uh, Adam? Oh, so he said, I heard your voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. Yun ang initial reaction ng isang tao. Merong takot. Basta nagkasala ka, merong takot yan. Matatakot ka. Yan ang nangyari kay Adam. Natakot siya kay Lord. Okay. So, ang fear, like for example, marami kang utang, hindi mo kayang bayaran, or ikaw ay merong cancer at mamamatay ka, yan, ikaw ay natatakot. Di ba? Natatakot kang mamamatay ka na hindi ka gagaling nitong cancer mo, natatakot kang uh, makulong dahil hindi mo mabayaran yung mga utang mo. So, merong fear involved. So, sunod niyan, ay ikaw ay ma-stress. Yan. May stress ka. So stress, there are three types of stress. Yung you stress, and number one stress is good stress. Ibig sabihin, yan ang ginagawa natin kapag tayo nagtatrabaho, gusto nating uh, ma-beat ang uh, deadline, o gusto nating uh, ma-accomplish yung ating mission, yan ay good stress. But three types of stress, merong second at saka yung third stress, they can cause sickness and disease, and they can cause death. Yan ang nangyayari kapag tayo ay may fear, na stress tayo. And then, ito na, magkakaroon ng chemical imbalance. Ang katawan. Yan. Alam niyo po, si God kinerate ang tao with all the good chemicals in mind. Kinerate ako dito, puro good chemicals yan. Kaya lang, kapag tayo ay hindi sumusunod sa kanya, uh, for example, Ito mga good chemicals, nilista ko dito. May dopamine, for example, it helps you feel pleasure when you finish a task. So, itong dopamine na ito ay paggagalingin yung katawan mo, mag-i-emit siya ng, ng hormones sa katawan mo at gagaling ang katawan mo. Okay? Or yung serotonin regulates your sleep, appetite, and mood. Another hormone. Oxytocin produces feelings of love and connection. So, pag ikaw ay nagmamahal talagang ang saya-saya mo, di ba? in love na in love ka dito sa boyfriend mo, ang saya-saya mo, yun ay nagpapagaling sa katawan mo. Or itong endorphins, they trigger positive feelings. Example, when you have exercise or laugh or even when you have sex. Ito ay nagre-release ng endorphins. Ibig sabihin, positive feelings. Yan lahat ng mga uh, ginawa, dinesign ni Lord na yan ay pampagaling sa katawan. But, but kapag ikaw ay nagkasal at nagkaroon ka nito, at nagkaroon ka nito, ang chemicals na yan, ang mga binanggit ko, ay dadami na dadami. Like, oy naku, malapit na yung, yung kailangan kong mabayaran itong, itong utang na ito. Nag-stress ka araw-araw. Or, oh, oh, ano, naging stage 4 na yung aking cancer. Dati stage 2 lang, ayun, stage 4. So, araw-araw-araw-araw, iniisip mo, araw-araw, nagkakaroon ka ng stress so, nagkakaroon, nag-i-emit ang katawan mo ng napakaraming chemicals at yan ang nagkakaroon ng chemical imbalance, nagkokos ng sakit. Yan. Nagkokos ng sakit. Yan ang sinasabi, Proverbs 17.22, A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. Parang napakasimple ng scripture na to, A merry heart does good like medicine, Pag masaya ka, gagaling ang katawan mo. Kaya yung sinasabi ng Reader's Digest, laughter is the best medicine. But ano ibig sabihin na a broken spirit drives the bones? Alam niyo po, kung may buto tayo, for example, ito, buto. Yan, buto. Dito sa loob niyan, ay merong tinatawag na bone marrow. Alam niyo po ba, ang bone marrow na yan is the center of the immune system. Pag nag-dry up ang bones, ano mangyayari? affected ang immune system, papasok ang sakit sa katawan mo. And that's the reason bakit majority ng mga tao ay may sakit ngayon. Hindi nila ma-overcome ang fear, hindi nila ma-overcome ang stress. So, anong dapat gagawin? Well, ang praying in tongues will help you with this. 
Kasi dito, ito yung sickness. Titignan natin pa paano gagaling ang sickness na yan. Ha? Yan ang sickness. Meron kang sickness. So, kailangan mo ng righteousness. Hindi ibig sabihin hindi ka na magkakasala. But you need to be born again. You need to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because He is the righteousness. He is your righteousness kapag ikaw ay na born again. So kung righteous ka na, which is uh, ikaw ay magkakaroon ng peace. Dahil dito, sa, sa Isaiah 53, 4 and 5, Jesus bore all your sicknesses and carried all your diseases in His own body. The chastisement for your peace was upon Jesus and by His stripes you were healed. So in other words, one of the very first things that Jesus gives to the born-again believers is peace. Kaya pala kailangan palang kailangan natin ang magkaroon ng peace. Pagkatapos, ang mangyayari dito, magka, pag ikaw ay nagkaroon ng peace, magkakaroon ka ngayon ng chemical balance sa katawan. Hindi ka natatakot. Wala na. And then, magkakaroon ka ng healing. So, nakikita natin, ang fear is the opposite of faith. At sabi ng Bible, that faith, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Anything that is not of faith is sin. Hindi tayo pwedeng magduel dito. At sabi natin, o paano tayo hindi magfe-fear kung nagmong problema tayo ng mga ganyan? When we pray in tongues, isa yan sa tatanggalin ni Lord sa atin, ang fear. He will deal with us from here, from the roots. Ang enemy, magkaka-discernment ka, malalaman mo sinong kalaban mo, hindi ka magkakasala, magkasala ka man, kayang-kaya mong ano, hit, baguhin yan because of the power that the Holy Spirit will give to you. And then, mawawala yung fear, mawawala yung stress, and then ikaw ay gagaling. Hindi ka mamamatay. So that is what praying in tongues will do to your sickness and disease. And this same way, kung ikaw ay may problema sa pera, ganyan din yan. The reason bakit hindi ka nawawala doon sa financial difficulties is because you worry. It's because you fear. It is because you are full of stress. Makikita po natin yan sa mga scriptures a little later. So sinasabi sa yung mga, itong fear na to, mga roots yan, roots yan. Like, hindi lang fear, pwede bitterness, unforgiveness, remorse, anger, pwede hatred, Pwedeng, uh, pwedeng uh, strife. Pwedeng yung nag nakikipag-away ka. Pwede yan. Okay. So, a merry heart does good like medicines, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Kapag ikaw may problema sa bones, ibig sabihin ng bone marrow mo ay nag-thin out, malaking problema yan because it will affect your entire immune system. So, ang cortisol, isang chemical yan, at sinasabi rito that it's the body's main stress hormone produced by your adrenal glands. It manages how your body uses carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. It keeps inflammation down, regulates blood pressure, it controls your sleep and wake cycle, it boosts energy so you can handle stress. And cortisol is a good chemical. But alam niyo po, kapag kayo ay na stress na todo todo, etong cortisol na yan ay babalik na. Maraming chemical na yan, it could cause you cancer, it could cause a hypertension, it could cause stroke, it could cause heart attack, it could cause like arthritis, kung ano-ano, diabetes, kung ano-ano sakit. Kaya hindi tayo pwedeng ma-stress, hindi tayo pwedeng hindi at peace. And the only way we can do that is praying in tongues. Important point to remember number five, praying in tongues is only for those who thirst. Napaka-importante, katulad ng kinuwento ko sa inyo kanina when I was at the Araneta Policy, sabi ko talaga, naku talaga, hindi ako makahintay na tanggapin ang, ang Holy Spirit talaga, hindi ako mapakalit, talaga gusto ko, yan ang thirst. Yan ang thirst, hindi yung, ay totoo ba yan? You will never receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ay naku, o kautik daw yan, you will never receive the power of the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. E kung ano ka ngayon, hanggang ganyan ka na lang habang buhay, because hindi mo kayang walang power ng Holy Spirit in your life to overcome si yung enemy natin. Amen. Luke 11, 11. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? 
So, ang kailangan lang natin hingin natin sa Holy, kay God the Father, ang Holy Spirit at ibibigay niya sa atin yan. Sabi in John 7 verse 37, On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Dinidrink pa natin talagang Holy Spirit? Talaga pa yan, pastora? Dinidrink pa natin? Let us see. Verse 38, He who believes in me, sabi ni Jesus, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Pangako ni Jesus yan, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. Ano yung living water na yan na magpo-flow dito sa heart, dito sa belly? Ano ba yan? Ito makikita na in verse 39. But this is spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in Him would receive. So, nakahanda niyo bang tanggapin itong Holy Spirit na ito? Baka paguhin niya yung buhay niyo. Isaiah 44, verse 3. For I will pour out water on him who is thirsty and floods on the dry ground. Nakita niyo, hindi ka lang bibigyan ng water dito. Bibigyan ka niya ng floods on dry ground. Dry ground, ibig sabihin, desyerto yan, wilderness yan. Walang source of water yan. And yet, maglalagay siya ng floods. Ganyan ka drastic ang gagawin ng Holy Spirit sa buhay mo. It, I mean, this is not from me. This is from the Word of God. And every word in the Word of God was inspired by Himself, by the Holy Spirit Himself. I will pour my Spirit. Siyang nagsasabi na, I will pour my Spirit on your descendants. Hindi lang ikaw ang tatamaan ng power, ng anointing, ng blessing, ng supernatural power, and my blessing on your offspring. So, hindi lang sa descendants mo, mga anak mo, mga apo mo, mga, mga ano mo, great, great, great grandchildren, tatamaan ang power. Kung ikaw ay gagawin mo na ngayon yan, if you develop mo yung relationship mo with the Holy Spirit. Important point to remember, number six, as you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will experience three phases of the baptism. Ito po kasi marami tayong, uh, ano ngayon, audience ngayon, na bago, kaya uh, sabi ng, Parang may prompting ang Holy Spirit na banggitin ko ulit ito. So, nangyayari dito, sabi is Acts 2, verse 1, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So, nagdadasal ang mga, mga uh, disciples of Christ. Sinabihan sila ni Christ na mayroong helper na padadala. Ito ay si Holy Spirit. And in verse 2, And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. In other words, ang Holy Spirit nang galing sa heaven, at bumaba siya, He descended on the earth with all His power and might and glory. Bumaba siya na ganyan, at doon niya linagay sa upper room where the 120 disciples had gathered together, at in-immerse niya itong mga disciples nito. Ibig sabihin, nilunod niya sa kanyang kapangyarihan. Ngayon question, nangyari pa ba yan? Nilulunod pa ba tayo? Yes! Ako'y nalunod. Ako'y nalunod sa power ng Holy Spirit when I received Him. Because I was thirsty. I was, I was really desiring the Holy Spirit to come upon me. So, this is the immersion. Ang tawag doon, nagaling sa heaven, in-immerse ka. ka sa kapangyarihan niya sa presensya niya, sa anointing niya, sa blessings niya. Okay? Now, Acts 2 verse 3, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. So, ano yung itsura niyan? Ito yung itsura niyan. Ayan. Divided tongues. Nandito sa ulo nila. Or, ganito yan. Divided tongues, ha? Huh? Or kaya ito. Now, balik tayo dito sa... And then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire. Have you ever wondered? I think question ko. Bakit tongues of fire? Bakit hindi hands of fire? Bakit hindi heads of fire or eyes of fire or ears of fire? Bakit tongues of fire? Have you ever wondered? Yung tongues of fire na bumaba sa kanila, ang tinatawag na infilling. So yung una, immersion, bumaba ang power, bumaba ang Holy Spirit, at sinukluban ang kanyang mga disipulo with His presence, with His power. Ngayon, itong fire na to, sa ulo nila, it gave them the infilling of the power. 
So yung outside kanina, ngayon, inside. Inside. So pumasok ang power, pumasok ang anointing, pumasok ang Holy Spirit sa loob. Walang tissue, walang cell, walang muscle, walang bone na hindi tinamaan dyan sa power ng Holy Spirit na yan sa loob ng katawan. And that is why healing takes place. Just give Him time. Healing will take place 100%. And question, have you ever wondered why it was tongues of fire that came down upon the disciples? Alam niyo po, Psalm 69 answers this question. Si David, ang nagsalita nito, in fact, was a psalm. Ang sabi niya, therefore my heart is glad, and my glory rejoices. My flesh also will rest in hope. Pastor, anong ibig sabihin niyan? Well, sabi niya rito, bakit niya tinatawag my glory? My glory thou rejoices. Well, ako din, nagwa-wonder bakit binigay sa akin ni Lord ang scripture na to, Lord. Hindi ko naintindihan ito. Ano ibig sabihin? And then, bigla akong nag-compare sa mga ibang scriptures, which I always do. Tinitingnan ko yung mga, yung mga translations, iba-iba. Before I teach yan, binasa ko yung mga scriptures kung alin ang pinakamagandang sasabihin ng Holy Spirit na papakita ko sa inyo. And then I discover this. Ito pa ng glory na sinasabi ni David na to is his tongue. Kasi yung kanina, NIV, ngayon nakita ko sa New King James Version, sabi niya, in my tongue rejoices. So ano ang ibig sabihin niyan? Ang ibig sabihin niyan, bakit tongues of fire, the supreme purpose of the tongue is to glorify God. Kaya napaka-importante ng tongue, super, super, super important. In fact, when I became a preacher, like 24 years ago, 23 years ago, ang first message ko was a tongue. Every use of the tongue that does not glorify God is a misuse. In other words, kung ikaw ay magagalit, magmumura, magkakurs, ikaw ay magsisinungaling, ikaw ay uh, magmumura, or whatever, it will not glorify God, it will be a misuse. Okay? At may consequence yan. Proverbs 18.21 Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Ang kapangyarihan ay nasa dila. Death, kamatayan, life, buhay, and this life is no ordinary life. This is a life in its fullness, in its prosperity, Ito yung life sa John 10.10 10, that I have come to give you life and that you may have it to the full. Yan ang abundant life na pinangako ni Jesus. Death, kamatayan yan, kay satanas mong gagaling. Death in life nasa power ng dila. Nasa kapangyarihan ng dila. Ilang beses ko na pong tinuro ito. Pero hanggang ngayon, na ano ako, na na overwhelm ako sa dila. <laughs> Grabe talagang pag pinag-aralan ko yung dila talaga na over. And those who love it, ano itong it? Ito nagsasalita ka either words of death or words of life. Pag sinabi mo, wala ka ng pag-asa, stupid ka, or whatever, kung anong gusto mong sabihin sa asawa mo, kung kanino, yung pastor naman hindi marunong mag-preach, or whatever, mga words of death at can be consequences sa sinabi mo. May sakit ka today because of the words that you spoke with your mouth before. Because na yun ang sinasabi. Those who love it will eat its fruit. Magkakaroon ng prutas yan. Tinanim mo yan. Sinabi mo yan. Sinabi mo with your mouth. Maari hindi mo man napansin. Maari hindi mo man lang naisip. Bigla ka nalang nagsalita. Kaya lang nagkaroon ng fruit. So, ang, gina, ang, ang sabi nito, ang kapangyarihan ay nasa dila. And those who love to speak words of life will have life. And those who love to, who will speak words of death will have death. Inherit mo yung fruit nito. Okay, next. In Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Sabi ni God, I have set before you life and death. So yan, nilantad ko sa inyo, life and death. And then, blessing or cursing. In other words, itong life na to, it denotes blessings. Itong death na to, it denotes cursing. Nakita natin? Tapos may commandments si God. 
Therefore, choose life. Pinagpagpip, hindi ka pinagpipili actually ni God. Sabi niya, therefore, it's a commandment. You choose life. That both you and your descendants may live. Pagkakabuhay ka kung anong pinangako ni Jesus na buhay. The abundant life. At nasa dila mo yan. Nasa kamay mo yan. In Romans 6.13, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. Ibig sabihin, binigyan tayo ng members, parts of the body, at gagamitin daw natin ito as instruments of righteousness. Okay? So, kailangan righteous tayo. Which is, napakahirap gawin. Kaya, mahirap gawin because wala yung power ng Holy Spirit sa atin. But pag nandiyan ang power, it's not that hard anymore. So, ang, ang focus dito is the tongue. Bakit ang tongue ay focus dito as one of the members na, na dapat natin i-focus? Or dapat tayong maging desperately focused on the tongue? Why? Because this is the member or the part of the body which, above all others, we cannot tame. Hindi natin kayo yung tame. Tingnan po natin. James 3 verse 8, But no man can tame the tongue. Hindi mo kayang itim ang tongue mo. Hindi mo kayang itim ang tongue. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. James 3 verse 5, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boast great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. Ano ibig sabihin ito? Sabi niya ang tongue is disproportionately small. Napakaliit yan compared to the rest of the body. Napakaliit ang tongue. And yet it has the ability to control your life. It has the ability to, to like itong direction ng buhay mo, siya ang magdidikta. Ang tongue has the ability. All you have to do is speak it. All you have to do is declare it. Sinasabi dito, the tongue is disproportionately small. Napakaliit. And it's able to control your entire life. It's able to dictate your entire life. Bakit ko nasabi yan? Because sabi niya dito, see how great a forest a little fire kindles. Ang forest fire, di ba forest fire, nagsisimula yan usually sa isang maliit na fire, mostly it's a cigarette butt that was carelessly flicked out of a moving vehicle. Tinapo na ganyan na naninigarilyo, tapos yan, napunta sa daan, tapos nahanginan, napunta siya sa mga dried leaves, at nagkost ng fire dito sa forest. And it affects thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres of land, which would take about 50 years to restore. Ang analogy is ang tang natin kamukha ng little fire na yan na nag-cause ng forest fire which would take 50 years to restore. Kita nyo, ganyan ang dila. And, Numbers 14-2, kung natatanda nyo ang nangyari dito sa mga Israelites, and all the children of Israel complained. And everything did not complain. Nakalagay sa Bible. Philippians 4-2, 14-2. Sabi niya, in everything do not complain. Huwag kang magreklam mo. It doesn't matter kung anong pain ang nararamdaman mo. It doesn't matter. Huwag kang magreklamo because yung complain na yan is not of God. Papasukan ka ni Satanas dito, katulad ng ginawa sa mga Israelites. And all the children of Israel complain against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or if only we had died in this wilderness. Diniklare nila. If only we had died in this wilderness. They had the whole world in front of them. God was giving them the promised land, flowing with milk and honey. It was not just filled with milk and honey. It was flowing with milk and honey. They had houses there that they didn't build, the wells that they didn't dig, their animals that they didn't rear, or the, or the orchards and the grape vines na hindi nila tinanim. Nandun lahat. It was a promised land. All they had to do was come in. Kaso hindi. Gusto nila mamatay na lang daw sila sa wilderness. And this took place after they experienced all those signs and wonders and miracles in Egypt. 
tinatawanan natin ba't ganyan din tayo? Napakaraming miracles, napakaraming supernatural signs and wonders ang sinishare ng mga tao, and yet tayo hindi naniniwala dyan. We're basically the same as them. So anong nangyari sa kanila? They were never able to enter the promised land, and yet, ano nangyari sa kanila? They experienced exactly what they declared with their mouth. They went round and round and round the wilderness for 40 years until they all died. Dalawa lang nag-survive. Yung hindi, yung si Caleb and Joshua, alam natin yan, because they listened to the bad reports of the ten spies. Na sinabing yung inhabitants of the land uh, are being devoured by the land itself, or uh, sila, they were mere grasshoppers, and yung inhabitants are giants. So, takot na takot ngayon sila. So, ayaw mong maging ganyan for the rest of your life. Kung ka mamatay ka, maging ganyan ka. Okay, James 3.6. Balik tayo dito sa 3.6. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Yan ang tongue. Yan ang nagkukos ng sakit sa katawan. The tongue. Hindi mo man alam yan. But, the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles, defiles, dinudumihan niya yung katawan mo, the whole body, and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Pwede ka pang mahulog sa impyerno dahil sa mga sinasabi mo with your mouth. Ganyan ka grabe ang, sal ang dila. James 3.9, With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude, ibig sabihin, image of God. So, sinasabi ni God, bini-bless mo ako, oh Lord, I glorify you, I magnify you, I love you. And yet, pag nakita mo yung kaaway mo, yung nag-cost ng sakit, ng sama ng loob sa'yo, yung nang-utang sa'yo na hindi nagbayad, or whatever, yung asawa mo ng babae, minumura mo siya. Sabi niya, you bless God the Father, and you curse men. Out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, sabi ni James, James was the brother-in-law of Jesus and he was a pastor. Sabi niya, my brethren, these things ought not to be so. Ang dila, hindi pwedeng dalawa ang sinasabi. Blessing and cursing, hindi pwede as Christians. Blessing lang ang sinasabi natin. Blessing lang, walang negative. Ask Christians, dahil yan ang sinasabi ng Bible. And in verse 11, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Sinasabi niya, ang spring water, like sapa, yan ba ay dito sa tabi, lasang mapait? At dito sa isang tabi, lasang matamis-tamis? No! Ang lasa ng tubig na yan sa sapa is the same. So hindi rin pwede ang tila natin Magkaiba. Magkaiba ang sinasabi. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives? Or a grapevine bear figs? Does no spring yields both salt water and fresh? So, ang fig tree daw ay pwede bang mamunga yan ng olives? Or ang grapevine pwede mamunga yan ng figs? No. So, yan ang sinasabi sa ating dila. Now, question. How can the tongue be tamed? So, hindi pala naman, no man can tame the tongue. Hindi pala natin kayang itame ang tongue natin. And yet, ang tongue na to, it produces death. It produces cursing. Hindi pala natin kayang itame. Anong gagawin natin? Ano ang solution na binigay ni Lord sa atin? But no man can, ayan, no man can tame the tongue. Is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. And ito, <laughs> ang anong ang solution dyan? Praying tongues. And that is why nagpadala si Lord, uh, uh, pinadala ng, ni Jesus, ang Holy Spirit, at ang binigay sa kanila ay tongues of fire. Yan din ang binigay sa inyo nung nireceive nyo si, si Holy Spirit in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Nung, nung nabaptize kayo, ganyan din may fire. Of course, hindi na natin nakikita yung fire na yan. Kasi ang demonstration for the Word of God na pag-aaralan natin in the future. But you received the same fire. In fact, sinil maraming testimonies na ka-receive sila ng heat sa loob ng kanilang katawan or naka, mayroong fire na ramdaman sila dito sa ulo. Pero it, even if you didn't feel any fire or any heat, it doesn't matter. Basta maniwala kayo ng importante, maniwala kang 
tinanggap mo ang baptism in the Holy Spirit, then you were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Kung nagda-doubt ka pa, mamaya, mag-administer uh, ulit tayo siya ng baptism. So, and they, in, in Acts 2 verse 4a, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Ang tawag dito is the infilling. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them a chance. So, itong pag-speak nila ng tongues, okay, ulitin ko ha, because this is very important. Dumating ang Holy Spirit at in-immerse ang lahat ng 120 disciples. Pagkatapos, merong tongues na bumagsak dito sa kanilang mga ulo, yun ang infilling. Yun ang in been wreathed in nila, yung infilling of the power of the Holy Spirit. So, outside, sila ay uh, in-invade ng Holy Spirit. Inside, in-invade ng Holy Spirit itong mga taong ito. And now, dahil punong-puno, because in feeling yun, punong-puno ka ngayon sa loob, meron ngayon tinatawag na overflow. Kailangan lumabas. Kailangan lumabas sa mouth mo. And began, dito papasok yan, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So the Holy Spirit, binigyan niya ng mga words yung mga tao, at ang gagawin lang ng mga tao ito is to give it a voice. So yung mga very conflicting na mga naririnig po namin mga uh, like complaints ng mga tao na like for many many years sila ay talagang naghahangad na ma-receive nila ang baptism of the Holy Spirit pero hindi daw sila makapag-speak. Impossible yun! So impossible kung sino man yung mga nakikinig ngayon. If all you have to do is open your mouth, believe na yung word na lalabas sa mouth mo like, ah, bah, ka, whatever, kung ano man ang lumabas sa mouth mo, that was a leading from the Holy Spirit. Maniwala ka. Kasi hindi nagbibiro ang Holy Spirit na ito mababaptize ng mga ito, pero ito mga ito banda rito, hindi mababaptize. No, everyone who's thirsty mababaptize. Maniwala ka. You start with a few syllables, tapos magdadagdagan ni, ng Holy Spirit yan in the future. Amen. And then, so this is the overflow. Kailangan mag-speak ka in tongues. Okay? Now, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So, kayo, kung abundant ka talaga, nireceive mo talaga ang infilling of the Holy Spirit, ang immersion nireceive mo, kailangan lumabas yung infilling na yon through speaking in tongues. Amen. So, you could miss any one of these three. You could be immersed and receive the infilling but not have the overflow. Yan ang malungkot. Nalulungkot po ako dito. Maraming Christians na ganito. Sila ay na-immerse. Sila ay na-infill. And yet, ayaw nilang ilabas. Ayaw nilang mag-pray in tongues. Paano mag-o-operate ang power ng Holy Spirit kung hindi mo lalabas? Okay. Now, we go to the 25 benefits of praying in tongues. Kanina, tinake up natin yung dalawa. Yung wisdom and then mystery. Okay. Praying in tongues, it is the gateway into the... Uh, Binasa ko ba ito kanina? Oo, oh, binasa ko na kanina. Okay. Benefit number three, praying in tongues is the gateway into the spirit realm. Ano ibig sabihin yan? Praying in tongues is the gateway into the spirit realm. 1 Corinthians 14, 14, ang sabi niya, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. But my understanding isn't fruitful. Ito, napakagandang scripture nito. Nadidisar nyo ba? Nakikita nyo ba? Meron ba kayo revelation ito? If I pray na down, my spirit prays. So, a human being has three parts. Spirit, soul, and body. I'm a spirit being, and I have a soul, and I live in this body. So, when I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. So, yung spirit ko ang nagpipray. In other words, so important. But, my understanding is unfruitful. In other words, Kapag nagpipray ka pala in tongues, hindi ka nag o sa flesh. Oh my gosh. Yan ang kalaban natin ng flesh. Bakit natin kalaban ng flesh? Ito yan. When you pray in tongues, you are not operating in the flesh. Huh? Romans 8.6 For to be carnally minded, ibig sabihin na carnally minded, operating in the flesh, is death! <laughs> oh my gosh! Kung yung tila mo, ipa yung sinasabi magkukos ng death sa iyo. Ang death could be mga uh, utang, could be sakit, could be kung ano-ano na maglilit sa iyo sa kamatayan. Sabi niya, to be carnally minded 
Meaning, kung ikaw ay hindi nagpe-pray in tongues at kung ano-ano ginagawa mo sa iyong dila, magliri din sa death because you're operating the flesh. But to be spiritually minded means to pray in tongues. Like speak in tongues, God, you are spiritually minded, is life and peace. Wow. Life na yan, yan ang pinangako ni Jesus sa atin. And may peace ka. Kaya, hindi maaring hindi mo... Kaya hindi ba sinabi ko sa inyo, no, na, na si Robert na diagnosed and may cancer of the uh, prostate, wala kaming fear. Kahit 1%. Wala. Meron lang kaming peace. Bakit? Kagagawan ba ng tao yan? No. Kagagawan niya ng isang Diyos. At binigay niya sa amin. Why? Because we are spiritually minded. Huwag kang matatakot. I mean, mag-pray in tongues ka para hindi ka matatakot. Praying in tongues is the key that unlocks the spirit realm. So when you pray in tongues, you are operating in the spirit realm and you're not operating in the flesh. What? In other words, pag hindi ka nag-operate doon sa flesh, walang kamatay, hindi ka magkakasakit, o magkakasakit ka man, gagaling ka kaagad. Dito ang, 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 ano, ang karangian, dito magkakaroon ka ng pera dahil kailangan mong mag-propagate ng gospel. Ang pera kasi, contrary to popular belief na ang pera natin ay kailangan uh, ipunin natin, kailangan i-save natin, kailangan. Hindi ganyan po. Ang pera ay uh, kahit anong ipon mo dyan, mawawala yan. Pero ang pera, ay ibibigay ni Lord sa atin para mabili natin na lahat ng ating kailangan para maging maging hawa yung ating buhay. But, may overflow siyang bibigay. Kasi, di ba, sinasabi niya, I bless you exceedingly abundant, di ba, all that you can ask her, thank you. Yung, abund- yung, yung overflowing na yan, ilalagay yan sa pagpapropagate ng gospel. Hindi mo susuluhin lahat yan kung hindi mo wala din yan. Hindi ganyan ang uh, prosperity, kaya tinatawag nilang prosperity gospel. Akala mo, mag-iipon ka, ng, mag-i-impact ka, ng, yung may barn ka, dyan, puro pera sa loob. No. Hindi ganyan ang prosperity na sinasabi ko po. Prosperity, yes, bibigay, bibigyan ka ng magandang bahay, may swimming pool, may four bedrooms. Bibigyan ka ni Lord kung ano ang dinidesire ng puso mo. But, kung may overflow, may sobra, dapat itulong yan sa kaharihan ng Diyos. Amen. So, Benefit number four, praying in tongues gives you a hotline to God. Oh, hotline, diretso ka kay God. Ay, ano po, napak- napakasarap po nito. Kasi lalo na kung talagang maniwala ka, pag nag-pray in tongues ako, Lord, nandito na ako. Kaming dalawa lang, we are one. We are two as one. Kaming dalawa lang, nag-uusap, kaming dalawa lang. I don't even understand what I'm talking about. The devil doesn't understand what I'm talking about. But God understands. Kasi siya naman ang nag, ano niyan, nag-invent nitong praying in tongues na yan. But, ito yan, praying in tongues gives you a hotline to God. Anong ibig sabihin yan? 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. Okay? So, diretso ka kay God. Tongues is your hotline to God. How many people would love to have an audience with God? Iba? Solo mo ito, ha? Solo mo. Millions. But Paul reveals to us a direct line to God, and when we get an audience with Him, miracles flow. My gosh. Ang kailangan ni God, intimacy. Intimacy sa mga kinrate ng mga tao. He created you for that primary purpose, to have intimacy with Him. Praying in tongues gives that intimacy. Amen. When we are praying in tongues, we are speaking in a supernatural language that God designed Himself. Question, why did God design such a supernatural language? Bakit? Ang sagot, so that His children can communicate with Him with absolutely no distractions or interference. Why do I say this? Why do I say that? Dahil, Sabi ko nga, even the devil doesn't understand. Hindi magchichigat ang devil na mag- makikinig because he doesn't understand. I don't understand. So, walang distractions. Yung salita ko lang ang nagko-communicate sa kanya, even if my mind is not thinking about it because wala ko, hindi ko naman alam kung ano sinasabi ko, even if my mind is not focused on what I'm saying, God is focused on what I'm saying. Kaya niya dinisign ang tongues para tulungan tayo. Yan ang tinatahag na rest. 
Oh my gosh. Rest. Nako po kang hara bala ra shikara ba shindara ra. Nagre-rest ka lang. Wala man kang dapat isipin. Isipin mo na kung si anong gusto mo isipin. Ang importante yung words na yan ay nakakarating diretso sa kanya. Naintindihan po ba natin yan? How precious! Napakapait ang Diyos natin! Siya nang gumawa ng paraan para tayo ay nakupo na lang ay tamad na tamad na sa Misha Balari Shikaran kahit tamad na tamad tayo and yet, dinavalue niya every word na sinasabi mo when you pray in tongues. Amen. Benefit number five. Pray in tongues is the most powerful prayer of all. Nako, most powerful prayer? Really? Talaga? Why? Because it is a perfect prayer. Perfect prayer. Why do I say that? Because since it was God who designed tongues, it enables us to pray in harmony with His will. Diba? Kung ano ang will ni God the Father, yan ang ipagpe-pray natin. Alam po ninyo, meron tayong, uh, meron will si God para sa atin. Meron siyang, uh, from the foundation of the world, purpose na dinesign for each one of us. Meron tayong calling, meron tayong destiny, God-given destiny tinatawag. At pag pinapulfill natin ang calling natin, uh, based on that destiny, grabe ang inheritance sa ibibigay. This is found in Ephesians 1 verses 17 to 23. Ang sabi niya, uh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us a spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened so that we may know the hope of his calling. So, on your calling here for me, the riches of the glory of God's inheritance in us, the saints, and your power. So, in other words, kapag ikaw ay inutusan ni God, et, sinabi niya, ito yung, yung purpose. Because when you pray in tongues, sasabihin niya sa yung purpose mo. You will know. Sabi ko nga sa iyo, yung Terry Chang Ministries, agad-agad nakita ko yan, 25 years ago. Sasabihin niya, kung anong calling mo. And then, anong gagawin niya? As you fulfill that calling, by His supernatural power, by the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, He gives you your inheritance. So, nakita nyo? Tatlo yan. Merong calling, pagkatapos may power na ibibigay, and then, merong kang inheritance na matatanggap. Amen. Benefit number six, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit prays on your behalf. So yung number three, at number, uh, number five and number six, they go together. Ang Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father. Alam niya yan. Tingnan po natin. Romans 8.27 Now the God, uh, He, God the Father, who searches the hearts, knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because He makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So in other words, ang Holy Spirit intercedes for us. When we pray in tongues, ang Holy Spirit Praise on your behalf. At ang ibibigay niyang words sa iyo ay words that is according to the will of God. And that is why it is a perfect prayer. It is an answered prayer. Kasi nanggaling ang words na yan sa Holy Spirit. For the word in Hebrews 4.12, For the word of God is alive and full of power and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing line. Tingnan po natin between the soul and the spirit, between the joints and the marrow, and as a discerner of the intents and purposes of the heart. And the dividing line between the spirit and the soul. Kailangan double-edged sword para ito break. At anong sabi? And the word of God is a double-edged sword. The word of God is alive, it's full of power, and ito yung double-edged sword. Dito, si Jesus, sa heaven. Dito, si God the Father, in heaven. Si Jesus na kaupo, sa right-hand side, ni God the Father. Dito ang Holy Spirit, kasama mo siya, ngayon, if you has been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Ngayon, ang sabi niya, itong dividing line na to, yan ang nagkukos kung bakit hindi makapenetrate ang power ng Holy Spirit dito sa body. Ang nagdidesisyon is the soul. Kasi yan ang utak, yan ang mind. 
So itong mine na to, ang nagdidikta, which is the wrong thing to do, kasi dapat ang spirit ang magdikta, ang Holy Spirit, tutulungan niya itong spirit, para yan ang magdikta sa soul. Ngunit ang soul hindi niya naintindihan, wala siyang revelation, kaya nga nagpapadala ng preacher si God. So ngayon ini-explain, kung makuha mo yung revelation na to, ang problema mo is soul, hindi ka naniniwala, ang, hindi pa niniwala ang, ang faith dito yan. Kailangan maniwala ang soul dahil yan ang mind. So ano mangyayari? Kailangan mabreak ito. Ang makaka-break lang nito is the Word of God. Now, the Word of God is a love, it's full of power, it's a double-edged sword that pierce, pierces between the dividing line between the spirit and the soul. And it's the discerner of the intents and purposes of the heart. So kailangan ito mabreak. Mabibreak ito by the Word of God. Pero, ano yung Word of God na sinasabi sa atin ngayon? To pray in tongues. So, in other words, when you pray in tongues, so, sunod ka sa sinasabi nito, Hebrews 12.4, uh, Hebrews 4.12, susunod ka dyan, ito, magbe-break, kasi maniniwala ka na today na ikaw ay na-baptize in the Holy Spirit, nasa iyo ang power, nasa iyo anointing, nasa iyo ang blessing, maniniwala ka, all of a sudden, itong power ng Holy Spirit, double-edged sword dyan, I -i ano yan, hindi ako marunong mag-drawing, ganyan na lang. Bubut na si niya yan. And then, kung ikaw, ang problema natin kanina is like cancer, or meron kang sickness, or meron kang financial problem, or whatever, ang power ng Holy Spirit, bubut na si niya yan once you believe, pagkatapos yan, mag strike dito sa katawan. And then, mariresolve ang yung problema. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom we must give account. So in other words, si God alam niya lahat kasi discerner of the intents and purposes of the heart. Alam niya kung ano ang heart mo, kung ano ang nilalaman niya. Alam niya kung meron kang doubt, alam niya kung may unbelief ka, alam niya kung may bitterness ka. Alam niya, ang sabi ng, uh, ano, ang sabi ng, ng mga neuroscientists, uh, 70,000 daw ang thoughts ng mind natin sa isang araw. Imagine mo, yung 70,000 thoughts na yan ay alam ng Holy Spirit. Alam ni God the Father kung ano yung mga thoughts na yan. So ang gagawin ng Holy Spirit, ipopurify niya yung mga thoughts na yan hanggang mga wala ng mga wala ng mga wala hanggang mga mawala. Dahil yun ang kalinisan na ine-expect niya dito sa yung soul para makapenetrate siya, para mabutas niya itong dividing line na yan at makarating yan sa pangangailangan mo. So it's a lot to do with your mind. Kaya kailangan maniniwala ka. John 7, 3, 8, He who believes in me and the, and the scripture has said, Out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Kasi sabi ng mga, mga doctors, di ba? Uh, kapag ikaw ay hihinga, ganyan, mararamdaman mo yung belly mo, di ba? Merong hangin na lalaki, liliit. Pag may inihap ka lalaki, pag mag-exhale ka, liliit. Ano yung breath na yun? The very breath in your lungs that fills your belly. What is it? Where does it come from? It's the breath of life, the spirit of God, the new man. So in other words, dito sa, uh, uh, dito sa nakadeposit ang Holy Spirit sa atin dito, di ba? Sabi niya, uh, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But even if the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, ang, spirit to, ang Holy Spirit ay nag i dun sa ating spirit to, which is in the heart, situated in the heart. So napaka-importante po na, like we see here that the Word of God is a tool that would separate our very own thoughts into good and evil. So, ang Holy Spirit lang ang makakagawa niya that even tayo hindi natin alam kung mga good and evil na yung ginagawa natin minsan. Kasi kulang tayo ng relationship with the Lord. Kulang tayo ng pagbabasa ng Bible. So, tayo ay very, very confused. Hindi natin. Kaya tayo, uh, sabi niya, ng, eh, di ba, pag, uh, uh, sabi ni Hosea 4.6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Walang excuse. You will be destroyed for lack of knowledge. Kaya, importante pong alam natin ang salita ng Diyos. For example, anong salita ng Diyos ngayon? That you have to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then you believe, you be thirsty, and then you speak, you pray in tongues. Pagkatapos magbabago yung buhay mo. Yan ang paniniwalaan mo. And dito sa ating teaching ngayon. Amen. So the human brain generates up to 70,000 thoughts per day. 1 Corinthians 6.19, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit 
who is in you. So, yan ang temple ng Holy Spirit na yan. Itong body, itong body na yan. Tongues is a language the Holy Spirit places inside us to express to God everything we are unable to put into words. In other words, ang Holy Spirit, kung hindi tayo marunong magdasal, ang Holy Spirit will pray for us, siya ang maglalagay ng words sa ating bibig para marinig ng Holy Spirit, para marinig ni God the Father at ma-answer yung prayer natin. How does praying in tongues work? Ito, ganito po yung go-work ng ano, yung conclusion natin dito. Number one, know that the Holy Spirit is one with God. Try and God yan, Holy Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son, Jesus. So, the Holy Spirit is one with God, and they are eternally connected together. Hindi pwede maghiwalay si God the Father at ang Holy Spirit. The Father who is in heaven gives His Spirit to Him who believes. Like, for example, ako naniwala, uh, 25 years ago, there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, binigay niya sa akin ang Holy Spirit kasi ako naniwala. Okay. Number three, the Holy Spirit indwells Him. So, nag-indwell sa akin ang Holy Spirit. Kaya, ang dami-dami miracles and signs and wonders and miracles that took place in my life. Dahil nag-indwell sa akin ang Holy Spirit, I became the temple, the Holy Spirit. Number four, the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father because they are one. Diba? They are one. Alam niya lahat ang sekreto ni God the Father and the Holy Spirit because they are one. Ito yung proseso ng praying in tongues. Ano nangyayari dyan? Bakit ka magkakaroon ng transformation because of this? Tapos, ikaw ito, ako ito, meron akong pangailangan, meron akong cancer, kailangan akong gumaling, meron akong tinidesire na yung mama na ko, magkapera ako, magkaroon ako ng magandang maraming buy, whatever, na kung aspirations, meron akong hopes, at kung ano-ano. Ayan, ang needs ko. The Holy Spirit transforms them. Itong, itong yun. Bakit ito transform ni God? Itong needs ko? Ito transform niya aspirations and hopes? Ito transform niya yun? Kahit kailangan, gusto ko ng maraming bahay, or gusto ko ng ano, magandang mga kotse, whatever, ito transform niya talaga yan? Why? Alam niyo bakit? Siya naglalagay ng desire sa puso. If you delight in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. Ngayon pala, kaya, if you prosper ka ni Lord, dahil gagamitin niya ang part ng iyong uh, pera na yan para sa propagation ng gospel. And I was willing. I was a willing vessel. I mean, the Holy Spirit transforms them into prayers that conform to God's will. So, tinuruan ako ng Holy Spirit kung paano magdasal. Pray in tongues lang. And then, man has to cooperate. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, hindi po ako nagdasal para ako gumaling ng cancer. Hindi ako gumaling, hindi ako nagdasal para ako yung mama. Hindi ako nagdasal para magbalikan kami ni Robert. Hindi ako nagdasal niyan. Ang dinasal ko lang, ay nagpray ako in tongues. That was it. Yun lang ang ginawa ko. And then, alam niyo naman, alam ni uh, Holy Spirit, the will of the Father, na magbalikan palang mag-asawa, at alam niya ang aking desires in my heart. So, ginawa na niya lang yan. Man has to cooperate with the Holy Spirit by praying. So, nag-cooperate ako, ako ay nagdasal in tongues. Nag-cooperate ako. Now, number eight, God receives those prayers directly from my spirit. Naku, tinanggap niya yung aking dasal na yun. Perfect prayer! Tinanggap niya yung dasal ko. Diretso sa kanya. Kaya ako gumaling within one month. Tapos yung mama na within three, two, three months total. And body can come over because tin tinanggap ni God ang mga prayers ko direct, directly from my spirit. Nagpe-pray ako. Tandaan po natin. May pray in tongues. Our spirits pray. Di ba? Hindi ka, like, operate in the spirit realm. You're not operating in the physical realm. And God is a spirit being, and I'm a spirit being. So, when I pray in tongues, I communicate with God. Ayan po ang nangyari. And then, an answered prayer is awaiting me. It took one month bago ako gumaling. We stop praying. We stop the flow of the... Bakit? Kulang ito. We stop the flow of the power, siguro, of the blessing. If we stop praying, we stop the flow of the power and the benefits. If we continue praying, we continue to receive the power and therefore the benefits. Ang power nawawala, hindi po nagstay yan. Ang oil, 
para ang oil nagiging uh, stagnant yung oil na yan, dapat yan pinapalitan. Ganyan. And that is why we have to pray in tongues. That is why uh, sinahapi ko sa inyo noon, you pray at least 30 minutes a day or one hour a day. Naku, 30 minutes. Hindi pwedeng dumaan ng isang araw na hindi kayo nagpipray in tongues. Kailangan punong-puno kayo ng power in the Holy Spirit every single day. Hayaan nyo, maghihintay lang kayo and you will see the miracles taking place in your life. Oh, meron po tayong testimony dito from a brother in Christ. His name is Perry. He said in his testimony that the doctor found a 29 millimeter cyst at the head of his pancreas, but it was drastically reduced in size to 15 mm in just two months after he prayed in tongues every day. Every day. As a result, he didn't have to go through a Whipple procedure, which is an operation that is more complex than a heart transplant. They shared with his pastor, alam niyo po ang pancreas, pag may cancer kanyan, one month, a few months lang, mamamatay ka na. It is very, very sensitive itong cancer na to, very. When my doctor told me that the seriousness of my pancreatic condition and how I might have to have the Whipple operation, I became really frightened and prayed to the Lord for healing. I would pray in tongues during my quiet time as you taught us to. This helped to strengthen my faith and remove negative thoughts. I told God I didn't want to go through the Whipple procedure and prayed for the cyst to be reduced in size and to disappear eventually. When I went for the scheduled check up, I felt a sense of calm and peace in my heart. Yan ang ginagawa. Tawag ito, hindi man niya naintindihan niya. Sinabi lang, mag-pray in tongues, ayan ang ginawa. Sabi niya, I went for the schedule. I felt sense of calm and peace in my heart. I continued to pray in tongues as I waited for the medical report. Lo and behold, the cyst had reduced in size to 15 millimeters. It had shrunk by half in two months. The doctors also found it was benign. But I mean, wrong spelling. Benign daw, hindi cancerous. As, as such, uh, I only needed to return once a year for check up. What a miracle, sabi niya. To pray in tongues. Now, that is the power of praying in tongues. Is there an organ? And tanong ko sa inyo ngayon, is there an organ in your body that needs repair? Huh? Is your heart not beating right? Do you have an embarrassing skin condition that has defied all the remedies you've tried? Are you discouraged by a bad medical report? Are you worried about the long-term health condition? Are you suffering from panic attacks and depression? Give it all to the Lord and let His Spirit repair and restore your body and mind. God wants your whole, wants you whole in every way, both inside and out. Meron tayong video uh, at ito ay uh, magbibigay sa atin ng confirmation kung anong nangyayari po tayo ng praying tongues. Amen. Thanks for watching our internet edition of Nightline. I'm Martin Bashir. Today we examine the Christian practice of speaking in tongues. Those outside the church often say it's nothing more than gibberish. But some Christians claim that it's the purest form of prayer, beyond the constraints of normal language. Nightline's Vicky Mabry reports on the science of speaking in tongues. It is an ancient practice mentioned in the Bible. St. Paul called it speaking in the tongues of angels. Jesus' apostles were first said to do it at Pentecost. The technical term is glossolalia. Most people call it speaking in tongues. There's a vast number of people out there that because they did not personally experience it or have been taught against it all their lives, there's no way they have an ability to embrace it. So that's common. We're still mocked and made fun of. That's not stopping Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus or others in his congregation at the Freedom Valley Worship Center in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, from using what they say is a God-given gift. It's almost as if I'm able to tap into God's heart and what he wants. I get goosebumps, actually. You can feel him all around you, and you can feel him speaking through the words that you're saying. It almost sounds like a foreign language, but actually, 
Those who speak in tongues are not saying anything in any known language. With the gift of tongues, I can trust the Holy Spirit to figure out what needs to be healed. He will use what sounds like gibberish, like any other language sounds like gibberish. Uh, he, he will interpret that for his purposes and his uses. We say things in our own English language, but speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that we're going to God and Jesus intercedes for us. They say they have no control over what comes out of their mouths, that they're swept up in a rush of ecstatic religious feeling, and that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University uh, of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. If we're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history of religion and spirituality, I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. They're going to go around very fast right now. He's recently published a study of Americans slowly, speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way, we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on. Whatever the facts are, bring it on. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And First, he's told to pray in English. Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives, for, for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. <laughs> This is the first scan when he was in prayer, speaking in English. This is the second scan when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part, it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole a very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity. But I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room and who were not speaking in tongues on demand as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. That's in fairly stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who are in prayer because they're very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomenon, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic 
question, I think, and something that I'm not sure that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say maybe we're not, we're still crazy, we're just not as crazy as they thought. Thank you so much. This is Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Philadelphia. The gray area where fact meets faith. So so it only confirms not in tongues, the Holy Spirit is in control. Amen. You see now the dividing line Yung sinabi ko, itong unbelief, itong doubt na to, mapupuksa yan because ang problema is the soul, which is the mind, at ang mind, ang magkocontrol yan, ang Holy Spirit, when we pray in tongues, at mapubutas yung dividing line na yan, kaya ka magkakaroon ng miracles and signs and wonders. Amen. Magpasalamat po tayo sa Panginoon. So, mag-aano muna ako niyo, papag-receive ko yung mga, marami po tayo yung mga unbelievers na nag-join sa atin. So, Magpipray lang ako kung sino man ang hindi pa nakareceive kay Jesus sa inyo. So sumunod lang kayo and pray this prayer as if it is your own. Okay, tulungan po natin tayong mga uh, believers na tulungan natin silang magpray. Heavenly Father, forgive me for all my sins. Patawarin niyo po ako sa lahat ng aking mga kasalanan. At maraming salamat sa kapatawaran na ipinigay niyo sa akin. Jesus, Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. Holy Spirit, change me. Mold me to be the person that you have designed and created to be. So, Father, yung pong hindi pa na nagkaroon ng baptism in the Holy Spirit, so, kung open ang heart nila, ibigay nyo na po sa kanila ang Holy Spirit right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Marami po salamat.